This is how I play the game! That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone, warning, what you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Guys, I want, I want you to know what's going on. This has not happened before. So, I'm trying to uh, open the video call with June, and Discord says, well, this is awkward, it has crashed. And I click reload, and then it just says, it's awkward, it crashed again. And it's doing it in a loop, and I don't know what's causing it. So I don't know what's going on. If I have to restart my PC or something, I've never seen this happen before. It's never, it's always just worked. And I even, you saw, I tested it right before and it was working with me. So I don't know why it's crashing like this. Um, I might have to do audio only and see if that works. Because when I'm trying to open the video call, that's when it's crashing. And I don't know if you could hear, but June was talking for a second. It was working. And then it stopped. So give me a second. June, I'm sure June is probably trying to wonder what's going on. He could probably hear here. I'm just going to try to figure this out. Um... And go from there. I have no clue. So let me mess around with it a little bit. I'll try uh, restarting it a couple times. Uh, How embarrassing. I'm a professional, right? I'm supposed to be better than this. And, and quite frankly, I, since I knew this was coming, I was always planning to fess up to the WWE Champions account when I was live reacting to your documentary. I knew you were going to cover it so in depth that there was no way I was going to be able to be like, you know, lie about it and weasel my way out of it. You were going to pin me to the wall on that, right? So that's why I did it during the documentary. What, what are your thoughts on that? That the whole arc basically ends with me reacting and admitting it. I, I don't know. Like, I, like, the thing is with that is, um, it was a, kind of like an open secret where everyone knew that you were that account, right? Every, pretty much everyone I talked to, it's like, oh, yeah, like, even I knew, like, I, my personal belief was you were always, like, you know, down from the rafters. So for you to admit it, I'm like, okay, well, at least things can move forward a bit and people can focus on something else. I, I think it's, um, I guess, cool for the arc. If that was your question. Right, right, right. Um, in a lot of ways, it was kind of almost cathartic for me to watch this thing because it allowed me to see all my problems and the things that I've done wrong and to fess up to them and apologize for them and to let my audience know, you know, this isn't who I want to be. This is, this is crazy. How many people can say they've had a four-hour documentary made about them on the internet that at any moment you could open it up and see all the things you messed up in the last, you know, 16 to 20 years of your life, right? Someone who is destined to keep making the same mistakes, he never learns, right? So, if there's already a track record history of him habitually lying for personal gain, he will probably continue to lie for personal gain forever, correct? Like, there's been no actual effort to change. So, Turkey Tom did a documentary about me late last year, okay? And it was called 10 Years of Failure. And, of course, I have issue with that title, whatever. That's not the problem. The problem was after it came out, he said he wanted to interview me. But come to find out, the whole thing was an attempt for him to get me on the Lal Cow podcast. And he even said publicly, oh, this is a way to milk Phil for content and to keep milking him and getting more out of him. That I'm not cool with, you know? <clears throat> what? I, I mean, Phil, I don't know like, where to start. Like, I feel like that title is accurate, too. Um, what was incorrect about Thomas' video? Oh, nothing. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even saying there's anything wrong oh. with his video at all. I'm saying the fact that his intention was to try to get my attention to milk more content and to basically turn me into a source of revenue. That's what he was basically saying he was trying to do. And that's what I wasn't cool with. Similar to side scrollers where I had no issue with their original interview. It's the attempts to get tons of money and content out of someone after the fact when that was never really part of the upfront agreement. That's, that's where I have issue with people. And I don't think you, that wasn't your attempt here with this documentary at all. Uh, well, I mean, I think it's fine. I mean, like, I, I don't know really where, where you're going with this because I, I feel you, you kind of do it the same. Like you, keep the drama rolling and that, that's fine that's like i think smart business I, mm. I really just don't do that because i'm not like a personality but i think on tom's side that if i was tom i would do, like do the same but I, I think even with like the crack stuff right you you brought him back just to like insult him and that is like drama too you kept that kind of going the same way if, if that makes sense uh, oh the cra you, uh, craig is that what you just said uh, yeah 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 i was on the show no I, to be honest i didn't think that interview was going to go that way at all fuck you you're a liar okay i really didn't like i thought what was going to happen was I was going to apologize to him for lying on his show and he was going to apologize for the follow-up where he basically made a lot of money for my detractors and we were going to be cool. And 
That's not what happened. I mean, what happened happened, right? I had no in interest in insulting the guy or anything. I mean, he told me to go fuck myself in that interview when I was being cordial. You know, I was just asking him questions, pressing him on some things I thought were unfair. And he's the one who escalated it first, okay? 100%. Every word that leaves my mouth is a lie. Uh, now, this question, I'm going to warn you. This person may be spinning it in a certain way. And just, you know, I'm not saying I agree with what this person is saying, but I'm just going to read it word for word, okay? For June, why were there parts in the documentary where you would quite rightly introduce Phil's arguments with skepticism? For example, Phil claims, or this is supposedly because. But with third-party statements, you would sometimes speak in absolutes. For example, based on John and Howard's words, you would say, Phil was bold-faced lying. I'm curious why you didn't introduce their comments with skepticism also. Something like, well, if we were to take them at their word, this would mean Phil was bold-faced lying. I completely agree that you need to be skeptical with hearsay, but you should be skeptical with everyone's hearsay, not just Phil's, in my opinion. Well, I mean, that like lends more to um, credibility and that you have such a lengthy history of lying, right? I, I, it's, it's hard to really pin that down. I agree. And, and Listen, I'm not yeah, taking so. offense. I agree with you, man. I do. <laughs> yeah, but no, I'm just answering that question. So that, that's why I would present you as such a way, because, I mean, through the words, they're the more credible people, and I, I have no reason to really distrust what they're saying as opposed to you, right? I, I believe I read... um. I had to lie about things because I had to protect my family, right? Oh, what was it on? I, I saw your entire reaction, and then you also admitted that you did not contact um, the other part of uh, Project 7, right? The, 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 so it, it was a lie. I, I did find that, and it, it was, in fact, a lie. Yeah, I think, I think we were talking about uh, respect the pact and the yeah, two yeah, guys. Yeah, 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 because the whole thing, uh, to, to give context, it was, um, they were like, hey, reach out to them for, like, you know, and offer them money, and then you told them, okay, I'll reach out to them, and then they said no, and then you came back, like, they said no, which was a lie. And then uh, Rambo, right, I believe, contacted them. It's like, hey, so why did you deny the money? It's like, what well, money? Phil never told us. So it, it was also like, it was just a lie, I guess. It was, you're right. It was basically a situation where I was told something up front, and I had absolutely no idea that those guys would have wanted money. Phil's a scam artist. And if they actually did want the money, I would have given it to them. But we didn't have the conversation, and that's my fault, 100%. I should have reached out to them. I should have extended the, however you say, the olive branch or whatever, said, listen, I, you guys say you don't want to do it, but is it the money? And I didn't do that. That's for me, I took them at their original word. And then later on, when John asked me, hey, did you offer the money? And I said, well, they don't want money. That was based on previous discussion months and months prior. That was not based on any current information. So you're right. You know, you caught me out on stuff like this in the documentary and rightfully so. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I get, need to get better at. And I've, I've said this publicly now, moving forward, if I ever do anything like Project 7 or anything like that ever again. Even if it's with, like, close personal friends, I'm working up a contract up front. That way, there's no misconceptions about who wants what out of it. We all get what we want out of it. And that way, no one comes out at the end as being, you know, feeling like they were misused or mistreated or not offered a fair shake. So, okay, fair enough. And I think that was a good answer. Um, well, I got, I want to try again, right? Like, no lie. It's that dopamine feel. You get addicted to it. Like, you know what? I want to pull again. Because I want to try, I got some good characters that first time. The second time I didn't, but now maybe I'll get, I'll recover from that. Let me try again, and then you try again. You see what I'm saying? And then you're done. Next thing you know, you just spent thousands of dollars and you, for what? For virtual Hulk Hogan's and virtual wrestlers. Okay. Well, first of all, June, I, I really want to thank you. This has been a great you know hour conversation. I respect your time. I do have one final question, and. I'm, I'm curious on your take on this, all right? You have now covered a bunch of different people on the internet. You've seen the toxic communities that form around certain people, like you said, like Wings and myself. Do you think there is potential someday, and I'm not saying you, but do you think there's potential someday that someone could flip this and actually do a documentary on the worst detractors and their communities, and would that have potential to be something that could blow up? That would be hard. That, because... With, with, like, um, the people I covered, it's, like, a singular person, and there's a clear timeline, and it's a lot more consumable, right? Um, detractors are a broad field, so, like, are, are we talking about, like, viewers, you know what I mean? Like, are, are we talking about, like, um, just people who type in the chats? Because, like, I don't, I don't think anyone cares about those people, but if you're right. talking about, like, the more, like, uh, intense ones that, like, really go crazy... Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, you, know. we're talking about people on Kiwi Farms who are doxing people. We're talking about the people who are making a living with these detractor channels. You know, just a couple off the top of my head, you know, Duty Streams um, or Memology 101 who literally take my videos every day and make toxic content out of it. Because some people say to me, these people, when you analyze them, in reality are 
bigger lol cows than the people that they fixate on and make money on by making these these videos. And I don't really know because I don't spend time microanalyzing these people, you know, but I, I just find it fascinating that people in a lot of ways might say the people who are focusing on the lol cows and making this content about them in some cases may actually be the bigger lol cows. And is there potential there in the future to maybe analyze that? I think there is some, but the draw of the average person is they want to be entertained. They, they want a clear cut story about like, especially like an internet figure or someone of like more prominence or like who really blew up and like you would be focusing on such a like marginalized of the marginalized, right? Yeah. Such a unique kind of person that doesn't really represent anyone. And then like the, these more like intense people also kind of like bounce around. So it'd be, it would be like really difficult. And I, I, I just, I don't, I don't really currently see that, I guess there is just also the level of intensity would be like more comfortable than I think, um, like how, how do I say this? People online, right? Let, let's say you wings boogie, right? You guys are funny and entertaining in your own way, right? But someone online who does like um, really crazy stuff might not be as consumable to the average person and might be more so too disturbing and maybe the average person doesn't want to see that, which also affects the market. So currently, I, I don't really see that, if you know what I mean. Uh, no, I get you. I, I, I like, I thought about it and I'm like, that it would be such an endeavor, like as, as arduous as it must have been to get enough for a four hour documentary about me, like it would be like really like grasping at straws to try to get enough information, first of all, about these people. And then to formulate, like I would think the only way it could even be done, like you couldn't even do a video on one, maybe it would have to be like a documentary of like, here's the cornucopia of the worst detractors of this person and what they've done. It would have to be like this super video to put it all together to try to retain interest. Cause you're right. I think uh, on surface level, these people aren't that interesting. They're just kind of pathetic. A lot of them, the way that they act, you know, it's a difference between you make fun of someone in a chat or you laugh or you're literally trying to ruin someone's life. And by the way, you're getting money on that because you're monetizing the video at the same time. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you there that I don't think that there would be enough at this point unless there was like really intense research done and maybe like a super video. So. <laughs> well, I mean, it, I don't know. It's just there, there's so many aspects to it, but I, I don't really know of any like intense ones that really like monetize their videos or, or really like... That, that's the thing. If you're going to like be doing like, let's say, send the police at your residence, right? You're not going to be online or easy, easily accessible or really have that much of a history. But that, that being said, I don't really see these people, I guess, making these videos, I guess, right? They, they, they yeah, it, it just seems like a different field. Right. Man, I'm stupid. I, FYI, this is actually an interesting thing to open up with. Um, I am trying to work with a company right now in regards to merch. Okay. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. I don't know if it's going to work out positively. You know, I haven't had merch now for two and a half years. And now with this turnaround that I have had uh, in the last, you know, month and a half, it seems like people would like some merch. Um, and I'm down to provide what people want. But the thing is, I've been blacklisted because my detractors went out there and they sent this hateful montage profile of me to everyone, to Teespring and streaming services and all this stuff. These companies don't want to work with me. They're like, oh, you're an evil guy. Like, am I really? Am I really that evil of a guy? Um... I don't think so, or at least the things that you think I'm evil for are things from the past that I don't do. Um, but basically, I I've been put into contact with a company, and the company seems to understand who I am, understand my history. They're actually seeing my turnaround right now, and the positivity, and the increase in viewership, and the increase in support that I've been receiving, and they actually want to work with me. So I will let you know, like, th this is all in development right now, literally going on behind the scenes. I will let you know when I have updates and if they're positive, I hope they're positive, okay? I might, I may even have some samples and things to show you guys soon that we can look at together on a stream and say, oh, does this look good? Does it look like up to quality of something you guys would want to purchase, okay? Now I'm out of money. <laughs> this always happens. Oh, I'm out of money. I spent all of my money. <laughs> well, well then, okay. I spent all of my money. Bloom Kid did a super chat. If you don't dress as Hogan for Halloween, everything's been for nothing. I'm not dressing for Hogan as Halloween. Nah, it's stupid. You know, maybe eventually down the road. I'm not doing that now. There's a, I already have a costume from last year that was expensive. That's a really good costume and it's not Hulk Hogan. Okay, so you could stop memeing right now. <laughs> we could do the Hogan meme when I play WWE Champions this coming Tuesday night. All right, but no, I'm not going to be Hulk Hogan for Halloween. <clears throat> There's still this back here. And it's still in the back of my neck, the back of my head, the back of my mind. And it's always telling me. It's WWE Champions time. I love it. I love it. Is a mobile game addict. Still has 
indoctrinated children who send him money blatantly milking for money. It's a money pit. It's gone. Just gone like that. In an instant. Fucking gone. I just care about money. That I just can't help it. I eBay. Contributions are mandatory. But I need your help. I am appealing directly to you. No decency, no respect, no common sense, no fucking maturity. It's the guy who just doesn't get reality. <laughs>